So, I'll be honest. Ever since 2016 or 17, I've always kind of thought that Five Nights at Freddy's would be a lot more intense, and for the sake of simplicity, scary, if it were in a VR experience. And I'm very happy to say that Help Wanted pretty much proved that entirely. Around 2019, Scott presented the idea of a full-scale VR remake of the first Five Nights at Freddy's game to the VR dev studio Steel Wool Studios who had made some VR titles previously for the PC, PlayStation, and Oculus. And so they did exactly that. They remade the first game under the guidance of Scott, and had revitalized the animatronics, their designs, their animations, all to better fit a VR experience. But when all was said and done, the two groups had thought it was a little... bare bones even with the enhanced fluidity and fear factor. So, Scott presented Steel Wool with the idea of more, expanding the original plan of just remaking the first game into remaking the first three games of the series, and turning Four and Sister Location into some mini-games based on parts of those games, and to connect everything together, they began to craft the idea of the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience, alongside it all to act as a bridge to connect everything. As a result, there's a lot to talk about with Help Wanted. More than just what it does for the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, but all its interesting quirks and changes from the original experiences it was based off of. For simplicity's sake, we'll be looking at each game mode in sequential order, and going into the specifics when the minigames start rolling in. So, we're gonna start with the first. Five Nights at Freddy's, the original. Freddy's 1 is probably the strongest and most faithful adaptation in the entire experience, probably due to the fact that this game was originally just meant to be the first game, made into a VR experience. It has what I think to be the perfect balance of new little features and bits to adapt it to the VR gameplay style, while keeping all of the important stuff necessary to retain the Freddy's game identity. I'll say though, the animatronics are way, way bigger than I thought they were in the original. I thought they were about the same size as, like, a guy usually is. Six foot flat, give or take in either direction. But in this, they feel fucking ginormous. Which I guess is more accurate to the size of Chuck E. Cheese mascots or showbiz pizza critters. Something I love, though, about FNAF is its heavy reliance on recognizable audio cues. The distant sounds of Chica messing around in the kitchen. Or Freddy's laugh getting progressively louder the closer he is to your office. It's all really enhanced in FNAF VR by the fact that you now have directional audio, and some sounds were actually enhanced to make the experience a bit easier. As well, most of the sounds in the game are direct rips from the original. Except for one, the sound of Foxy hitting the left door. They changed it from the classic three-hit sound to the most unnerving, spine-chilling grinding and banging I've ever heard in a game. Which is honestly more fitting for everyone's favorite exonerated Bite of 87 instigator. I really like this new sound a lot. Part of me wouldn't mind if they patched this new sound into the original game, but at the same time I'm glad they haven't. Something neat that Help Wanted does for variety is that standard mode consists of four levels per game. So for FNAF 1 through 3, a standard run is only four nights. The fifth night of each minigame is under a harder difficulty mode called Blacklight, which changes up the aesthetic of the game. Each section and level has some neat little quirk about it alongside changing the aesthetics, which I'll get into the specifics about it as the levels come up. So for now, FNAF 1's Blacklight level. It's a bit... underwhelming. Especially after the cool aesthetical feel of the menu having these neon colors all over the place, alongside the striking purples. Then you get into FNAF 1's Blacklight and everything is just gray. That's it. Despite bland aesthetical changes, Blacklight does provide 
albeit minor, gameplay changes. At random times, things will bug out, causing the doors to repeatedly open and shut, as well as the lights on both sides being on no matter what, until the glitching stops. Fortunately, this doesn't allow the animatronics to be able to come into the office per se, but if you don't close the door an animatronic is behind after all is said and done, then a suit fitting is in your future. But yeah, overall it's just a tad underwhelming and not a great introduction to the blacklight mode. The jump scares have some cool new flavorings, but aside from that it's all pretty boring. And the doors bugging out doesn't really provide a meaningful challenge when all it does is close the door and turn on a light after freaking you out a bit. I assume it's just grayscale to make the animatronics a bit harder to see on the cameras, but truthfully, at the point of Night 5, the chances you'll be looking at any camera that isn't Pirate's Cove and East Hallway B is slim to none. Overall, FNAF 1 is a ridiculously fun and faithful adaptation of the original, while including some new offerings and mechanics for a new gameplay style. Blacklight mode aside, it's a great opening stage for a very compelling minigame collection. Controversial take, but I think Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is the absolute best Five Nights at Freddy's experience in the entire franchise. I love the gameplay loop, the character designs, the new mechanics, and the lack of a power system and how it actually makes me feel like it was entirely my fault when I died. Comparatively to the first game and feeling like it's a completely random luck draw of whether or not I get jumped by Freddy before it turns to 6am. I also love just how panic-inducing this game can be. It really does earn that panic title card it got from the sister location back in 2016. Because a lot of the game is panicking to wind the music box, check the lights, or flick on the Freddy head in time before the animatronics get you. And Help Wanted only makes that more apparent now that you actually have to reach out and do all of those things yourself. Despite that though, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is not nearly as balls to the walls crazy as it is in the original. Because in the standard nights you don't really have to worry about the withered animatronics, except for Foxy. It's practically just the toys in FNAF 2 VR. However, it's still pretty decently easy. As long as you keep an eye on the music box and keep an ear out for the sound cues. I'll say though, the FNAF 2 office is way more claustrophobic than I remember it being. but. Truthfully, Let's Players like Markiplier stretching the game to fit a 16x9 ratio probably didn't help in my memory of it. The actual renders of the FNAF 2 office itself anyways make it seem way larger than it really is. So I guess it's just a sacrifice that had to be made. Speaking of larger than originally thought, Jesus Christ the characters in FNAF 2 are absolute units. They are ginormous, especially the withered animatronics. Those ones have got to be verging on 7 feet tall, at least. Anyways, for the most part, the gameplay loop remains pretty much the same from the original game. Check the lights from side to side, flash the light if anyone's in the hallway, then wind up the music box, and if need be, put on the mask. But with that comes a new set of... issues that come with the VR adaptation. A small oversight on the camera system in VR is that FNAF 2 very quickly becomes a single camera game because you really have to spend your time winding the music box. And as a result, you have the music box theme going for pretty much the entire night, lest you risk the wrath of the puppet. Honestly, the closer I got to beating FNAF 2, the more grating the song got to me. I was so ready to move on by the time that I got to Night 7. Oh, oh yeah, Night 7. So, unlike FNAF 1, Freddy's 2 actually retains the week at Freddy's experience the original games used to have, because this one has technically three blacklight levels. The first one is exactly what you'd expect when you hear of a blacklight FNAF level. Everything looks and feels like it's all caked in neon garbage Technicolor. And I love it, personally. Everything looks really cool. Everything looks really cool under the blacklight, it's legitimately my favorite blacklight level in the entire game. The other night is just called Withered, which cakes the entire game in what I like to call Restaurant Lockdown Red. Because the grim red light makes it feel like the building is on lockdown. Kinda like Phone Guy says it is in the Night 5 call! How about that? This night adds Withered Freddy, Withered Bonnie, and Withered Chica into the mix for an extra challenge. I assume these three aren't available in the normal nights because that'd be too mean of a challenge by night 5, and the human body can only move so fast. 
Although, this knight has a lever on the start screen to let you choose if you want your knight easy or danger. So I consider it two separate knights, so in turn, seven knights total. All in all, Freddy's 2 VR only cements my love for the second game. Everything feels just that much more satisfying in VR. I'm certain when I want my Freddy's fix, I'm absolutely going to go back to Five Nights at Freddy's 2 VR specifically. Last of the game remakes, Five Nights 3 is a weird entry in the franchise. It's one of the games best praised for its minigames and secrets, but let's be honest, FNAF 3's original gameplay is... bare bones. Without the secret minigames. I feel like it's a problem through the fundamental game design. If you'll amuse me for a bit, I'd actually really like to discuss it because it's something that's genuinely fascinated me for the last seven years. Only having one real animatronic that can end your run of the night, which is also designed to go to the closest sound, means Springtrap can be very easily wrangled into a specific part of the building if you're particularly good at the game. Even then, if you get distracted or particularly fucked over by the phantoms or random system shutdowns, Springtrap's actual jump scares are not scary at all, either through the sound or the actual animation. And something that doesn't really help is that the phantom animatronics use the exact same sound, so that means that by night 5 you very well may be hearing it up to 10 times a night, which really diminishes the startling factor of the sound which, in my opinion, is a very important thing with the Five Nights at Freddy's game. But that's the original game. So how does the VR remake tackle the blandest FNAF game? It's honestly a solid attempt to improve the game as a whole. Being able to see Springtrap actually shamble around is way more unsettling and haunting than just seeing him teleporting around the building, hiding in corners and peeking around windows like the original game does. The gameplay details overall, I think, have been adapted adequately. Like, the flashing lights and loud beeping when things start going to hell really stress me out, and keeping track of Springtrap reminds me of my fondness for the original game, especially now in VR that there's more than a handful of cameras that you really have to lean in to see if he's in there. A major improvement is that, after the first ventilation error, and you start losing vision, the entire game becomes noticeably darker, Meaning if you've not memorized the paths of each vent, you'll have a hard time keeping track of Springtrap effectively. And while it's more visually interesting, Springtrap's jump scare is still not very scary or startling even. Overall though, FNAF 3 gets the best improvement from the original game. Darker, grimier, it feels like the building will collapse in at any moment. And Springtrap himself is much more unsettling now that you can actually see him shaking and shambling and crawling around the building like the rotting, decrepit, shambling corpse of a robot-human hybrid. Uh, it really sparks some discomfort and unsettling feelings within me. Ugh. The Phantom animatronics, though, suffer a bit from the new VR experience. Now they all glow a bright, neon, ghostly green, meaning there's no possible way you're missing out on them like the original game would have you if you're not paying close enough attention. Only really enforcing the strange, Kinda poor game design of FNAF 3 as a whole, in my opinion. The blacklight level, though, has a really cool nod to the original game. Night 5 is caked in a bright red glow, and if you look in the vent next to you, you can actually see embers floating around through it. Implying that FNAF 3 VR's Night 5 takes place during the fire that destroyed the Fazbear's Fright's horror experience. A nice little detail that I think is pretty cool for the devs to utilize. Last thing I'll bring up about Five Nights at Freddy's 3 VR is... Something that happens on rare occasions is that the reward prize box you get for beating the knight can potentially contain Plush Trap, who jump scares you when you open the prize box, causing a bait and switch death. You can continue on with the rest of the game because you did beat the knight, but I always saw it as a random chance failure to annoy the player, and so restarted the level. I can't remember where, but I do remember seeing people speculate that this was added to prevent people from just grinding out FNAF 3's Night 1 for all the prizes. Since nothing happens that night, you can just let it run through and get all the prizes at the end. No biggie. What they failed to take into consideration is that the jump scare prize is not really that effective as a countermeasure for people grinding out all the prizes. It's at most only mildly annoying for people who would already be inclined to do something like that. I would know since I did exactly that. And funnily enough, the entire time I did, I never once got the plush trap prize. 
but the first time I moved on to finish the game, I got it immediately. And yeah, you bet it irritated the hell out of me. The Dark Room stage is the beginning of the actual mini-games in Help Wanted. Mostly being FNAF 4 and Sister Location, chopped and blended into various parts. These mini-games set you in, shockingly enough, a dark room with only a flashlight of sorts to defend yourself. Each stage also pits you against one character. They may be able to appear multiple times, but for the most part it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Firstly is fun with Plush Trap, which plays identically to the original minigame from FNAF 4, having to stop Plush Trap on the X otherwise he'll nibble your ankles or something. The blacklight mode for this shrinks you down to the size of a small critter while filling the room with a bunch of plush toys and FNAF 4 bedroom items in an attempt to make it more challenging. And having a larger plush trap is intimidating and all, but I can't really say it's any harder than the original mode. Next is Fun with Balloon Boy, and it's the same soup from Fun with Plush Trap. Also not particularly difficult, but a little more intense due to just how fucking disturbed Nightmare Balloon Boy looks. The blacklight level is a much more annoying challenge, as it fills the entire room with balloons, obstructing the timer and also Balloon Boy. Though the balloons provide a small benefit as you can tell which room he's in by the path of the balloons and which way they're going. After that is Fun with Plush Baby, which is the most frustrating and annoying minigame in dark rooms. If this video I took mid-recording isn't quite telling of my thoughts about it. Bro, I am fucking ridiculously green right now. I managed to do the fucking blacklight plush baby level, which is fucking ball-bustingly difficult. Here's the fucking problem with that, though. I got the fucking jump scare prize, which means that I had to redo the level anyways. I'm having a bad time. Anyways, during plush baby's level, you must fend off various plush babies with a limited battery for flashlight for six hours. The catch is that as the night goes on, more and more plush babies show up, and if you use the flashlight too much, you have to wait a little bit to let it charge back up, allowing the plush babies to pile up and potentially allowing them to kill you dead. Something I want to mention really quick is how FNAF as a franchise so quickly forgot about the bitty babs. You know, those little gremlins that hung around Circus Baby and Sister Location? I, I don't know. The most they get in Help Wanted 1 is an easter egg, outside of that, it feels like they've been entirely replaced by plush baby. Maybe Help Wanted 2 does more, I hear that's more focused on sister location anyways. The blacklight mode makes it more annoying, with not only more plush babies spawning, but also changes every plushie in the level to that of plush baby. And the active ones hunting you are now changed to scrap plush babies. And this level is as frustrating as it sounds, I very much hate this level for how tedious it is. The last part of Dark Rooms is Fun with Funtime Foxy. This is the most stress-inducing minigame I've come across, as I get very anxious and stressed when I'm in a large dark room with nothing to guide myself. My fear, I feel, is very clearly showcased throughout the footage as I keep whipping my head and flashlight all over the place, because I think I hear something, or see something out of the corner of my eye. This level is the part from Sister Location where you must crawl across the Funtime Auditorium without being caught by Funtime Foxy. And man, oh man, oh boy, oh man, is it stressful crossing a dark room when you're as directionally confused as I am. It's bad enough just crossing a dark room with no guiding path, but to know that there is in fact something else in the room with me that wants to eat my face just makes it so much worse. The blacklight mode has you crossing Funtime Auditorium while being hunted by Lulbit, instead of Funtime Foxy. But alongside Lulbit is a bunch of stationary copies of Funtime Freddy, Funtime Foxy, as well as Circus Baby. All of which throw me off guard and spook me whenever I'm near them. Dark Rooms is a perfect blend of the appeal of FNAF's main gameplay with FNAF 4's fun with minigames, as they aren't particularly difficult. Except Plush Baby's level, fuck those little gremlins. The challenge comes from time management, as well as pattern recognition. And as much as I may be stressed out by it completely, I really do enjoy Funtime Foxy's level. Parts and Service is a minigame series based off of repairing, cleaning, and generally servicing the main four animatronics, getting progressively more difficult and reactionary with each animatronic. This game mode requires a steady hand and patience. Both things I lack, funnily enough. Bonnie's level is a nice introduction to the concept, 
having to take apart, clean, repair, and put back together the animatronic you're currently servicing. With Bonnie, we must open his faceplate to retune his guitar through the harmonization module located inside the mouth of his endoskeleton. And as a kind gesture, we're also tasked to run his eyes through the eye cleaning device. Once the guitar is tuned and the eyes are back in place, we're done, and Bonnie is ready to go. Though Bonnie's blacklight level is a bit… underwhelming. Aside from changing the aesthetic of the level and swapping Bonnie out for the cool blacklight version, it's the exact same process. Outside of the out of tune note being different, but that's not challenge, that's changing which button to press. And in my experience, it was the same as whatever tune was off in the normal level as well. The only thing that would possibly be a challenge is the loud music playing the entire time, which can drown out the hand unit telling you what to do. But it's not hard to hear past it, if I'm honest. Chica's level is focused on how Fazbear Entertainment keeps their funny furry friends clean. Firstly, employees are instructed to pick off any food product or bits of crud around the joint or the general outside of the animatronic. And then they spray the animatronic with Chemispray to kill off any and all potential intruders that may cause issues. After that, you then have to put Chica's arm, hand, and cupcake plate back onto her main body. But doing so will cause Mr. Cupcake to scuttle off, which you then have to find him and put him back before Chica jump scares you. In the blacklight level, like Bonnie, Chica gets a neon rave aesthetic. As well, the entire room becomes completely dark outside of these giant, glowing cockroaches crawling around the edges of the room. This doesn't make the game any harder, really, except for putting Chica's arm back on. Other than that, it's still ridiculously easy. I'm kind of starting to think these blacklight levels weren't really thought too hard about, if I'm honest. If everything is done correctly, Fazbear Entertainment rewards you generously with a complimentary slice of pizza. Slice. One. Any more will be docked off your pay. You can also give a slice to Chica, because she deserves a treat. For Freddy, we're tasked with removing some personal items some children carelessly left behind. Firstly, we're tasked with removing a hat from the jaws of the iconic character. His grip on it is pretty tight, but I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. After a checkup on the inside of his chest cavity, we must remove a child's watch and also a child's shoe from deep within his chest. These must be removed carefully. So, if you're like me and have shaky hands, you'll get got pretty often before getting them out. But before you can grab the shoe, you gotta remove Freddy's music box, as the shoe is actually lodged behind it. When done, you're asked to put the music box back in place, but you clumsily drop it, breaking it. You have to quickly get a new one and put it in place before Freddy jump scares you. The blacklight mode shifts Freddy out with the Shadow Freddy seen in FNAF 1's blacklight mode but with it is a massive wall of CRTs behind Freddy, as well as little Freddles scurrying around the area. There's also toys, plushies, and other stuff floating around the area as well, getting in your way. None of it adds any sort of difficulty, as you can still clearly see everything. Outside of it being grayscaled, which maybe it causes issues if you find a broken or unusable music box. Maybe. Oh, Foxy. Or... Poor Foxy. He's gone and had a short circuit, and now his limbs are all acting out of sorts. His legs are shaking, his torso keeps turning, and his jaw won't stop yapping. So we've got to give him some new fuses so he can work properly again. Firstly, we're given the job of replacing the fuse in his leg, but we have to do it when it's not shaking, otherwise Foxy will attack us. Then we find that a previous employee has put his arm fuse into the chest cavity socket, so we must reach in and get it out and put it in his arm socket, and then find a new fuse for his chest cavity. Finally, we've got to give him his eye back, so we just wait until his eye patch is lifted and shove it in place. Good as new. Foxy's blacklight level is, again, the same thing as the original. However, it's themed around magma and fire, as well as each of the drawers being labeled as drawer number one. But none of this makes it any harder to play the stage because all the drawers contain the same things. The two right drawers contain fuses, same with the bottom left one, and the top left one contains Foxy's eyeballs. The hard part is finding the right fuse without having Foxy leave your line of sight, which isn't even very challenging. Parts and service is a bit disappointing, honestly. It's not very challenging and everything is simple enough that a single run through will get you very familiar with the process. And the blacklight levels being the same process with little changes, boring to say the least. You'd think there would be a bit more to do, or at least more caution would have to be taken. Or just 
I don't know, like, they could have made it so Bonnie's Blacklight could have two more notes out of tune. Or make the differences a bit more subtle, so the player really has to listen for it. Especially with the loud circus music playing. Chica, they could have put more crud on her. And instead of just a single arm you have to put back, maybe both arms would need to be put back. A nice homage to her FNAF 2 design. Parts and service is a little lackluster for my tastes, I guess. It's still fun, don't get me wrong, but it's not as challenging as the rest of the game is, or as much as I'd like it to be, I guess. So, if you've been paying attention to this video, you'll have probably picked up on the fact that I've not said anything in this game is particularly scary. I consider this game to be more startling, if anything. It kind of comes with the territory for jump scares. Either way, that changes for this, and this alone, because I think vent repair is absolutely fucking terrifying. Having to do a bunch of maintenance in a claustrophobic metal coffin while a stitched together mess of robot parts wants to snatch my fingers off is absolutely my number one least desired position to be in. Vent repair is basic building maintenance for a standard Fazbear restaurant and Circus Baby's Pizza and Rentals, but the catch is that during these, the Mangle and Ennard are crawling around the vents you're working in, respectively. And it's a pretty fun time, even if it stressed me out the entire time I played it. To start off, Mangle's vent repair tasks you with maintaining the temperature of a standard Freddy Fazbear's Pizza restaurant, which is kept at a cool 72 degrees. Which sounded like a lot to me until I remembered that I'm a Celsius user, and Help Wanted was probably made for an American audience. So it's actually closer to 22 degrees Celsius, which makes way more sense. You funny little Fahrenheit freaks really gotta catch up with the rest of the world at this point. Anyways, this stage requires you push buttons to reset the ventilation system in one of the restaurants, all while Mangle slowly crawls towards you in three different panels of the vent, each of which requires some combination of pushing buttons and pulling levers. And when all is said and done, all three panels open as you have to fix the valves that are leaking hot steam. On the flip side, during the blacklight level, Mangle's evil shadowy spirit friend is in the vents with you, known just as Dark Mangle. But with that, the second that you push the button to begin the vent repair, tutorial unit will instantly glitch out. And all vent doors will open, meaning that either animatronic can come and eat your ass at any time. These two are also a bit faster than Mangle is in the standard level. It's more stressful than the original mode and requires a keen ear and needing to keep an eye on the other two vents, just in case something tries to ambush you. Ennard's vent repair is in the deep bowels of Circus Baby's Pizza and Rentals, having to go through the breaker room and the secondary service ventilation shaft to get to the boiler room to maintain and fix the temperature for the restaurant, each area which requires its own bit of maintenance before proceeding. Firstly, within the breaker room, you must reset the breakers by pushing the right buttons. However, each wire leading from breaker to button is all over the place, tangled in within each other. Not surprising, truthfully. Each part requires that you really look inside the breaker rooms to be able to see where each wire leads to, as the breakers can get further and further from sight. In the third part, Ennard can be seen stalking around the breaker room, and each bright flash reveals he's moved yet again. When you finish, before moving to the second part of the level, before the vent closes, Ennard rips it open and tries crawling in before the elevator begins to lower deeper into the bowels of Circus Baby's Pizza. The second part requires you service the gear system that I can only assume operates the elevator or the Showtime Auditorium or something. It's a large dark area filled with gear systems and conveyor belts to lead spare gears around. However, you have a limited set of time to do this level, as Ennard will crawl around the area while you work on the gears. And if you take too long to fix things, or stare at Ennard for too long, he will attack, so practice caution during this. The final part has you recalibrating the gas pipe system, so that the furnace doesn't overheat or cool too much. Ennard is kicking around this area too, but he's a comfortable distance away to not be too concerning to me. Ennard's blacklight level is probably the coolest one in the game, however. The vent shaft and panels are all littered with parts of all the animatronics, such as Foxy being in the first breaker room, and a giant orange Phantom Freddy lumbering around in the back room of the gear system room. And Freddy's head is kicking around somewhere in the second panel of the boiler room. Outside of it being upside down though, 
things are pretty much the same. Except that Springtrap is crawling towards the player in the second panel of the breaker rooms in this level, which is just ridiculously cool. Along with being able to see all the characters lodged between the walls on my way down through the service tunnel, it's also a little ominous to see all the animatronic shells and parts littered around the different panels. Kind of makes it feel like Ennard has ripped apart anything unfortunate enough to come down. All in all, vent repair is quite possibly the most unnerving part of the game to me. The claustrophobic elevator having to lean into some of the panels to effectively see what you're doing, and the honestly freaky imagery of seeing the animatronic parts littered around Ennard's blacklight level really freaked me out. I actually kind of like that a lot though. Night Terrors is the last section in FNAF VR, and takes inspiration from Five Nights at Freddy's 4 for its gameplay, and uses Funtime Freddy and Circus Baby from Sister Location, as well as Nightmarian and Nightmare Fredbear from FNAF 4 as primary antagonists, each in their own respective levels. This is probably one of the most intense and challenging parts of the entire experience. This level, as with FNAF 4, is a very audio-sensitive game mode. You have to be very perceptive to hearing the breathing at the door to tell you if you need to close it or not. This only really changes during Circus Baby's level where you're trapped in the closet instead of just in the overall bedroom. Either way, these levels are interesting, so let's get into it. In this one, you're defending the bedroom from Funtime Freddy, Bon Bon, and Bonnet. Funtime Freddy and Bon Bon attack from either hallway independently while Bonnet hides in the dresser drawers to distract the player. If Bonnet appears from the closet, you have to run and get it closed to prevent Funtime Freddy from attacking you. I'll be honest, I really don't know if Five Nights at Freddy's 4 adapts to a VR gameplay style very well, especially since my Vive ones are touchpad based, instead of being joystick or d-pad based, which causes more than enough problems throughout my games. And it's no better in this one if I'm honest. This time around, Nightmarian will slither his way down the halls, while slipping his tentacle fingers out from under the bed, through the closet, and down from a hole in the ceiling to get you. So you have to close the doors and shine lights on the other areas to prevent it from reaching in and attacking you. This level is remarkably hard, near impossible, if I'm honest. It's not very clear about where Nightmarian is in the halls, and the tentacles move progressively faster the further into the night you get. So it becomes less of a get rid of the tentacles, to a push them back far enough to prevent being attacked, while holding off the Nightmarian from entering through the halls. Alongside all of that, your flashlight doesn't have a consistent power throughout the night, and becomes harder to see if Nightmarian is at the door you're next to. It causes a lot of frustration during the night as you need to hold it on the Nightmarian's fingers for just a little bit longer as a result, as well as shrinking your field of view down by a dramatic amount. It felt like a struggle not only against the game, but also the controller in some regards, because there were times I had to press the teleport button more than a few times, which almost always led to my death because I was just too late to prevent attack due to the buttons not registering. In Circus Baby's stage, you're stationed in the closet with a handful of plush babies, and you're tasked with closing the closet door when Circus Baby spots you. But you can't keep the door closed for too long, otherwise the plush babies will become feral and attack you instead. I picked up on this game pretty quickly, despite the very small window of time to do things. Nightmare Fredbear is pretty much a direct lift from how he acts in FNAF 4. He can attack from all angles, and you have to keep an ear out for which side Fredbear is coming down. And if his laugh is heard, then check the bed or the closet to see if he's there. This is one of the hardest challenges in the game, as you can't flash your light at him if he's in the halls or the closet. Otherwise he will immediately attack. Instead you have to check out for his bright red eyes. Other than that, it's all about the directional audio cues. Something I struggled with though was when Fredbear entered the closet, because it felt like no matter what I did, he'd attack me. Flash the light, attack. Close the closet door for too short, attack. Close the closet for too long, attack. As far as I'm aware, if he's in the closet, it's game over. Fortunately, you can get lucky and he can just not be in the closet some runs. It's preferred that when he laughs, he's on the bed. Then you can just flash the light at him until he goes away. It took me a long time to figure out his mode of attack, 
I would stress out and think any movement sound was him down one of the halls. So I'd get overprotective and run to a door, only to find out too late he was actually going to the other door. Other than that, it's actually a really fun level when you get the hang of it. But I will reiterate that I don't really know if I think the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 gameplay loop really adapts to VR all that well. I gotta be honest, this section is a weird grab bag in terms of challenge and quality. Either the night is easy enough to adapt to within the first few seconds, or insanely difficult to the point of frustration. Night Marion took me 45 minutes compared to the rest that only took me about 10 or so minutes. It's about on par with the plush baby darkroom level in terms of being less fun and more tedious and annoying. While Funtime Freddy and Circus Baby were weirdly easy for what they were, I adapted to both of those in only a bit of time. You'd think that each minigame per section would become progressively harder, but it actually fluctuates in difficulty between each level. I really don't understand why they would do something like that. This is Night Terror's blacklight level, and also the penultimate level of Five Nights at Freddy's VR. It's a mad dash through a smashed together maze of the various Fazbear locations in an attempt to find the pizza party. One organized by the strange character we've been seeing sometimes in the hub level of Help Wanted. But I'm sure it's nothing to really worry about. Every animatronic appears in this level at some point, either through set pieces or through the active animatronics that want to nibble your brains. While you meander through offices and hallways and key locations from the series absolutely caked in blacklight, once you do finally get to the wonderful pizza party, some doors dictated what kind of cake and pizza you'll receive, of which you get to gorge yourself on. And this is when the actual plot of the game rears its head. When you finally show up to the birthday bash, the strange bunny that's been getting progressively closer to you in the hub finally reveals themselves and beckons you towards the stage. If you entertain them and their strange idea, you take the place of Freddy Fazbear on the show stage, microphone and all. While music plays, the credits roll and the strange bunny man dances merrily around the party area. The ultimate ending to the Freddy Fazbear virtual experience is to become THE Freddy Fazbear. After all said and done, the Fazbear experience ending isn't the only ending to the game exactly. Moreover, it's not even considered the canon ending. But, to be fair, there's not much clarity on which one's the canon ending, even given what Security Breach presents. Alongside the other endings, there's a few other little bits that I wanted to talk about that I didn't really know where else to put in the video. One of the three endings you can obtain is called the Merge Ending, wherein, after obtaining all 16 hidden tapes, there is a chance of the anomaly being behind the screen, and then it begins to merge with the player, taking over their minds and body, allowing it into the free, real world. This is a cool ending, as it kind of pays off the rest of the time the anomaly crawls up behind you over the course of the game. Then there's an alternate ending that's branched off the merge ending that also requires you get all 16 tapes. If you listen to the 16th tape, the final recording of these strange logs, it'll tell of a way to get rid of the anomaly, possibly for good. There is a way to kill it. It wants to escape. To escape through someone. Someone plugged into this game. That's you now. You have to let it begin the process of leaving through you. Then use the disconnect switch that I've embedded by the main stage. Let it approach you. Let it begin to merge with you. Play the music and flip the switch. That will cause a hard restart of the game and flush the memory, effectively killing it. I hope. I don't know when it will come for you. Doing so will trigger a scene of the anomaly on the other side of a hand-stained steel door, and it shushes you before receding into the darkness, leaving the player forever trapped. What people don't mention is that this ending is not a thing you can consistently get. It requires you try over and over before you can actually obtain it. Thanks guys. Here I thought it was a guaranteed thing, but it's, it's not. After you beat the game for the first time, a new button appears at the table, letting you access the gallery. 
where you can view every animatronic in the game, as well as a few other knickknacks and doodads. Some of my favorite models to look at are Springtrap, Nightmare Endo, and Nightmare Fredbear. They've all got such distinct visual style that I can't help but want to study. I love seeing all the characters in 3D, they all look so cool. I'd really love to know if these are remade by hand or are tidied up and optimized models from Scott's original renders. Post scripting update, apparently according to SG underscore animations on Twitter, parts of the original Scott models of Withered Cheek and Withered Foxy are in fact kicking around the Help Wanted files. What are the odds? I'd hope it's the latter, because I'd love to be able to access Scott's original models at some point. As with most Five Nights at Freddy's games, Help Wanted contains a handful of the iconic easter eggs that run through the game series. Such as it retaining the various forms of Freddy's nose honk in the remake games. But it also has a rare chance of Helpy from Freddy's Pizza Sim showing up from behind the center console. I didn't get footage of it because it only showed up one time during my entire playthrough, and that was when I was grinding out the prizes for 100% completion. But I did get a screenshot of when it happened. Some other stuff I didn't get footage of but I know are in the game are Coffee Machine in the FNAF 3 office as well as behind the prize counter from Scott's game The Desolate Hope, in the FNAF 2 game mode, as well as Mangle's Vent Repair, the FNAF 2 endoskeleton can be rarely seen in the office and under the elevator, respectively. During Plush Trap or Nightmare Balloon Boy's darkroom levels, some mini renos can be seen in the doorways. And I've mentioned this one earlier, but on occasion Bitty Babs will appear in the closet with you in Circus Baby's Night Terror level. Last thing I'll talk about before moving on is there's a few other things kicking in the game that I hadn't had the chance to mention anywhere else in the video. First thing I want to bring up is that once you obtain all the tokens in the game, the prize stand gets a new set piece, exotic butters from Sister Location. And if you eat all of them, a button is at the bottom of the basket. Pressing it will click on the TV at the prize counter, which will show a feed of the party room in Pizza Party. It was actually originally going to display a random image of the animatronic work at Showbiz Pizza, but Scott removed it for a variety of reasons mostly relating to fears the audience will harass Showbiz Pizza with questions about the franchise and to quell speculation that the series was based on the pizza place. Not really surprising given how fans saw 87 in Scott's website source code during the FNAF 4 teasers and found it somehow correlated to I think an Idaho pizza place and then proceeded to bombard that said pizza place with questions and speculation about the games. Now, on the other hand, Scott, one to one, buddy. It's not a crime to be inspired. You don't need to vehemently defend your idea from people comparing it to IRL things. It's okay to be inspired to make something non-child friendly based on stuff that's child friendly. You should really be honored and proud that people have had the same passion for something you've made, like you clearly have the same passion for the things that inspired your own work. But that's just my two cents on the issue. Moving on, I'm not really gonna touch the lore of this game, despite the fact that I've gone out of my way to collect every tape, because then I'd feel the need to dissect the entire franchise, and not only do I not want to do that right now, but also, Sagan Hawks does a really good job at that himself. Alongside dissecting and reminiscing on the franchise as a whole, in his Five Nights at Freddy's retrospective series. I highly recommend his videos, especially the FNAF retrospectives. It's a personal favorite in terms of not only FNAF lore content, but also just a regular video I watch for background noise while working. His FNAF retrospective is genuinely some of the best retrospective analysis content on YouTube. I highly recommend his stuff if you've never seen it. Uh, enough promoting a guy more popular than me. Back to Funky Fredbear's Fearful Frights. Long and the short of it is that FNAF VR is the first step in the new FNAF story, finally pulling in the mimic from the Fazbear Frights graphic novels, and bringing it front and center to finally deal with in the main focus of this entire media franchise, as apparently the Mimic was an artificial intelligence designed to adapt to a bunch of the motherboards from previous Freddy's locations to create a more faithful AI for the Fazbear experience. As a result, it adapted some bad data from the previous animatronics and morphed into a malevolent glitch in the form of Spring Bonnie. Either way, it already makes an already confusing game series 
all the more confusing. As now we're passing on from spirits attached to the animatronics, to sentient metal through remnant, and now we're on to a weird mix of remnant and malicious artificial intelligence, or something like that. I, I haven't kept up with the Freddy's lore community since about the fourth game or so. It's very strange if you're coming in from being super familiar with the rest of the franchise, as it changes the formula just enough to be a fresh, new experience, but retains enough of the core experiences to be a faithful rendition. For those not as familiar, or who are entering the series to this kind of retrospective minigame collection of the franchise, which I kind of really like as a concept, gives people a refresher on what the roots of the franchise are going into this new chapter of Fazbear Entertainment. Either way, Help Wanted is a super fun and incredibly faithful experience. Maintaining the appeal of the FNAF franchise, specifically the sit and survive style gameplay, while also maintaining the hyper interactive appeal of virtual reality. And strikes the perfect balancing act with that, which I really just can't help but love. But its shittier parts really stick out due to the fact that there are some genuinely just unfair things in this game. Notably the plush baby and nightmarian levels. Plush Baby feels a tad more fair than Nightmarian, but that's because for the most part you're stationary while having to deal with the Plush Babies. But with Nightmarian, you have to not only keep track of the doors and which one he's at, but also you have to constantly be checking the bed, the ceiling, and the closet so he doesn't get you through one of those. Add on the fact that he genuinely just does not make a sound to let you know which door he's at, makes it ridiculously cruel and just tedious to play. Like I've sprinkled throughout this video, Help Wanted is very strange in the way that story-wise, this game is made as an in-universe cover-up for the events surrounding the Fazbear Entertainment restaurants. Something of a bad reputation over the last few decades, and while it's true that some stories associated with our name were loosely based on actual events, the majority of them were total fabrications from the mind of a complete lunatic. Lawsuits pending. But we aren't above laughing at ourselves. But the strange thing comes in the way that it implies the actual gameplay of the previous games aren't real, or at least are highly fictionalized retellings of these stories. But it gets worse because Help Wanted does not include the death minigames. So the actual FNAF Night Guard minigames aren't the real thing? But the death minigames are all emblematic of real events that happened at the Fredbear, Fazbear, and Circus Baby, and Fazbear Frights establishments. Basically what I'm getting at is it just makes an already confusing story that much more confusing, but it can really be hand-waved since Help Wanted is really only a bridge to gap the various FNAF media together, linking the remnant from Pizza Sim and the books into Security Breach and such. And it's all a pretty compelling little start to the new era of FNAF. Help Wanted had a little Halloween event updates between October 23rd and October 31st of 2019. Which, aside from being the first major content in a mainline Five Nights at Freddy's game, it's also the first piece of paid content update in the franchise's history. Many of these minigames are Halloween-themed variants of standard minigames, but it also has its own fair set of original content as well, such as Trick or Treat, a guessing game of which animatronic will be at the door or Pirate Ride, a light gun-like game where you go on a pirate-themed ride to sail the seas and take down sea monsters. Truthfully, I think it's a big enough DLC to cover in its own video, so I may do that closer to the Halloween season. This video is long enough, you know? Recently, Steel Wool revealed and then released Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2 a follow-up to Help Wanted, as well as being a bridge between Security Breach and its DLC, Ruin. And as far as I'm aware, Security Breach Ruin is also the end of the Mimic era of FNAF. And maybe the end of the FNAF games as a whole? If they don't elect to focus entirely on the books and now movies from here on out. Editor's note, I completely forgot that Into the Pit the point-and-click adventure game was announced back in January. Whoops. No matter. Help Wanted 2 looks pretty fun, and super interesting, as it covers the franchise from Sister Location and Security Breach, for its inspiration in minigames. And from what I've read, it's not structured that much like Help Wanted 1, 
but still gets the point across. And of course, when it released, the strange furries that make up most of the fandom used it as a way to prey on poor Roxanne Wolf. I haven't seen anything about it outside of a few clips of the Roxanne dress up minigame, so when I eventually get around to it, I'll probably stream it over on my Twitch page. So, yeah, all in all, Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted is by far one of my favorites in the entire franchise. Being a ridiculously fun, but still at times very unnerving, virtual reality experience. Despite the gripes I have with the game and how most, if not all, can be hand-waved with the word skill issue, it's definitely a top game for me and I'll always recommend it as a must-play VR experience. It's remarkably faithful to its source material and the new things it presents feel right at home among the gameplay styles of the original core experience, while still keeping things fresh enough to be a really fun and unique experience all on its own. Well, that sure was a video, wasn't it? If I'm honest, I was actually supposed to talk about this during the Virtual Insanity video, but I had just so much that I wanted to touch on that I felt like just splitting it off into its own video and just really fleshing it out, really chewing the fat about it. And I feel like I did a pretty decent job at that. Something that I want to touch on is that I'm actually going to be starting to post the full gameplay recording sessions that I do when I make these videos over on the alternate channel. So if you're ever at all curious that, uh, to see what my gameplay is like, the gameplay that I showcase in these videos, go check that, because from this video onwards I'm going to try and post those every time I make a game review. I may also do that for like a Riff Tracks Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of thing that I do with my movie reviews, the like three that I plan on doing ever. But until then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the long and the short of it. I'm still streaming on Twitch, just gave that a whole fresh coat of paint. I highly recommend checking that out. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. So I guess I'll smell you guys in the next video. See ya.